Hello, I'm Josie, and this is the next video in our little posture series. In the previous two videos, we've been discussing the importance of a strong core in supporting and stabilising the pelvis and the spine. And virtually every faulty posture will improve if you work on your core muscles. So this is one of the main ways in which you can improve your posture by strengthening your core. Another very important area is the shoulder girdle area. So when we talk about kyphosis, we're talking about that natural curve in the middle back. And then it comes into our natural dotted curve around the lumbar area. And these curves are necessary and perfectly normal. They aid ease of movement and quality of movement, and they also um, really prevent our spine from shattering. We need that, that curve to allow us to, to move and support our body weight. The problem occurs when it becomes too much, and that's obviously where the word hyper comes in. So um, sometimes actually it can be hypo as well. So you have some of the flat back posture where there is a lack of curves through the spine. Uh, but most of us will be very familiar with that round-shouldered forward head posture, especially since many of us have sedentary lifestyles now. And of course, the, the mobile phone constantly looking down like this, so you can, you can see from the side of you constantly looking down, your head comes forward, puts an awful lot of pressure up here where the cervical spine meets the, uh, meets the skull, uh, and that can create um, headaches. And then the shoulders come forward, and when the shoulders come forward, they tend to lift a little bit. And so there's a lot of weakness in the middle upper back area, and then a lot of tightness across the chest and the front of the shoulders. So this video is all about loosening out that area and creating some mobility. Now, of course, you can do any of these exercises if you're sitting at your desk during the day. We're just going to be working on shoulder lifts, shrugs, um, and then a little bit of work on retraction, protraction. Um, I like to do it on the floor, and especially if I'm teaching my clients, because then, first of all, it's easier for them to maintain that neutral spine, so they have the stability, so it keeps it nice and safe, and it also gives them an idea of actually where their shoulders and shoulder blades are. Um, if you get yourself up against a wall, you'll see sometimes, some of you will see how difficult it is to get the back of your head to touch the wall, and that's all because of this kind of posture. So we're looking at um, round-shouldered, hyperkyphotic postures today. So when you're ready, I want you to lie down on your back. And you need to have your knees bent. Make sure you've got some space behind you and to the sides. So make sure you get down in the easiest, safest way for you. So already, if you are very round-shouldered, you're going to find that your head is a little bit like this, in which case, I've got a blanket here. You can grab a blanket or a towel, fold it over, just enough to lift your head and get that length through the back of the neck, but you're not, a, you're not a huge, great big pillow, okay? Otherwise, you might just be able to find a bit more comfort for the back of the neck by bringing the chin down towards the chest, getting that length through the neck, and then wiggle those shoulder blades down the mat. So the most comfortable position um, when you have your knees bent is to let the knees come together. We're not going to worry too much about neutral position, you'll know that from the last couple of videos, but mostly here I want you to be comfortable and just drop the pelvic floor, draw back the lower belly a little and get the breath into the rib cage. So a round-shouldered posture is going to have a direct effect on your efficiency to, to uh, on, on your breathing efficiency. So how efficiently you breathe is going to be compromised if you've got your shoulders and your chest closed in. So again, when we're lying down on our backs, we have a nice open posture here. And just by breathing into the rib cage already, you might feel a stretch into the chest and across the shoulders. And then you can have your arms down by your sides, palms facing the body. And just think about how your shoulders feel. So generally, in a neutral position, in normal posture, our palms are facing our body. And then I want you to just take your arms a little way away from the body and then turn your palms up towards the ceiling and now feel what happens. You're going to find that your shoulder blades settle much better 
into the mat. But you might find it's a real struggle to hold your arms like here. So we're going to take our palms towards the body. This position of the shoulders opening out and shoulder blades sitting nicely on the mat will improve if you do the exercise in this video and the video that comes after this. Okay, now the next time you inhale, I want you to slide your shoulder blades up the mat, drawing your shoulders up towards your ears. And then as you exhale, I want you to slide them away. And I want you to do that a few times. So inhaling as you slide your shoulders up, try and keep the rest of the body absolutely still. We're just focusing on the shoulders, shoulder blades, the scapula. And then all the way back down. And just think about how that feels. So we want our shoulder blades really to sit nicely against the rib cage and then smoothly down. But you can see how much movement there is to be had because we need to be able to reach up, grab things from the top shelf. We need our arms and our shoulders, shoulder girdle area to have plenty of freedom of movement, but we need it to be supported by strength as well. Okay, just one more time. And then slide the shoulder blades all the way back down. So most of us never have our shoulder blades down far enough. And then think about the freedom in the neck. So any neck problems quite often come from the, the shoulder area, which is why we're starting with the shoulders. Now just be aware of where the shoulder blades are. And the next time you inhale, I want you to raise both arms up, keep the shoulder blades down, keep the shoulder blades down, fingers reaching up for the ceiling. Inhale to prepare and as you exhale, you start to take the arms back. Now think about your spine. I don't want your back to arch. Just keep it exactly where it is. And then you take your arms as far as they will go. Now some of you will get stuck around about here. Some of you, if you don't have any shoulders, shoulder issues and your posture is good, you'll be able to take your arms back a little level with the ears and then inhale as the arms come up. Pause and then go back again. So each time you exhale, Take your arms back. And it's a good idea to exhale here because you can use your core muscles to prevent your back from arching. So each time now we're exhaling back. Inhaling up, keep the shoulder blades down and then hold it right there. Now soften through the elbows a little as you take your arms out to the side and think about how that feels. So again, I want you to inhale to repair and then as you exhale, use your core muscles. Some of you may only get up to here, some of you may get a little bit closer to the ground. But think about how it feels. Most of you will be feeling a stretch across the front of the shoulders and the chest area because it's unfamiliar. If you've got rounded shoulders, those muscles are very short and tight. Incidentally, this is an amazing set to do on the foam roller. So if you have a foam roller sitting in the corner gathering dust because you don't know what to do with it, this is the time to drag it out and start to make use of it. But just be aware that you're going to have a lot more range because you're lifted off the ground and your arms are free to go much lower. And of course, that's the value of it. You can improve mobility no end on the foam roller. So you do have to take care. Remember all of these muscles are weak, whether they're short or tight, they're weak. Hold it right there. Now let's work on protraction, retraction. So next time you exhale, I want you to reach up, touch the ceiling, keep the spine still, but feel how the shoulder blades slide apart and perhaps lift off the ground. And that's a fairly normal position. So you may not, just hold it there for a moment, you may not have had much movement at all because if you're already here then there's not far to go. Now as you inhale bring the shoulder blades back down and then see if you can give them a gentle squeeze together and you'll feel your middle back area lift. So exhale as you close in the chest and reach up for the ceiling. And then inhale as you bring the shoulder blades back down and give them a little bit of a squeeze and feel that lift. 
Now this time when you bring your shoulder blades back down, I want you to just let the shoulder blades settle rather than retracting and looking for more of a neutral position. So just let them settle down. And if you're on the foam roller, they kind of wrap around the curve of the roller. It feels really good. Okay, now this time, as you exhale, you're going to reach for the ceiling and then slide your fingers across the ceiling and reach over the other fingers. Don't let the body move, it's just the shoulder, shoulder blade. And you should be feeling quite a nice stretch now between the shoulder blade. And then other side, shoulder blade lifts and then slides out as you reach your fingers across. And you can do as many of these as you like, but we're just going to do one each side for now, reaching across. And then one last time, take it up and take it across. I need to go for this little bit of work on stability, really. So with the shoulder blades nicely settled, inhale to prepare. And then as you exhale, let your arms scissor one way. And be aware of lack of movement in the rest of the body. And then you can inhale and then exhale. Now once you know that you're nice and stable, you can pick up the pace. So we could inhale one way, exhale the other. So sort your arms. And then we can move into helicopter arms. Okay, so from there, one arm goes back, one arm goes down, and then you sweep them around. And then coming back up, and then they sweep around. And again, keeping the rest of the body absolutely still. Now let's go in the other direction. Use the core muscles just very gently, that's all. You shouldn't be challenged too much here. Keep the shoulders away from the ears, remember. Now the next time the arms are up at the ceiling, hold them there. Now this time I want you to draw your arms right down into the mat with the elbows bent. Squeeze them in and now turn your palms towards your face. We do a little exercise called dumb waiter. You can do this sitting up as well. You can do this holding onto a resistance band. You can do this holding weights. Get the shoulders away from the ears. So if you can't get the elbows down to the ground without your shoulders coming forward like this, just keep the elbows off and squeeze the elbows in towards the waist a little. So imagine you have some banknotes between your upper arm and your body. And then as you exhale, keeping the rest of the body absolutely still, try not to create tension in the neck and the shoulders take the arms out. Inhale back up to the top. Now this is a very strong exercise, so do take care. Exhale out and then inhale, back up. And you can work up to 10 of these. If you're sitting in a chair, make sure that your back is right up against the back of the chair. You can do this standing against a wall, but you just want to be aware of your posture. Keep very, very still. And back up. And one last time, taking it out. One last time for us. And then coming back. Now bring the arms down by your sides and think about how your shoulders feel now. And then take your arms away from the body and see if, see if you can turn your palms out and see if you have a little bit more range. You should have, okay? We've been working on mobility of the shoulder girdle, so it should be a little easier. Don't force your arms though. They don't want to stay up. Let the palms come back to wherever they want to go. Now to finish with, each time you exhale, I just want you to allow your head to roll heavily over to one side and then bring it back to the center and let your head roll heavily to the other side and then bring it back to the center nice and relaxed you can just let it roll I don't do this on the foam roller okay you can sit yourself up if you're on the foam roller and just take your head from side to side take a look over your shoulder so you can stay here and relax now, deep breathing, and just let your head roll with the breath. And when you're finished, just take a few moments to...
catch up, think about how your body feels. 